Right, this is Sheila in 2010, January. I'm just going to be doing another cassette tape recording, re-recording, um, of our visit to Suffolk and Cambridge in 2005, where I did many little handset tape recordings as we visited various villages in search of our ancestors, um, going in the churches around the graveyards. Um, now this tape, I've had a, I'm even having a few problems with tapes slipping and sliding, hence the urgency to get them recorded. Um, at the start of here, well, I'm hopping from Newmarket to Exon and then to Burwell and then up to Stretchworth. Um, without playing the whole tape, I'm not sure where we end up on this tape. But anyway, this is our me and Brandy in 2005. And here we go. I think it's uh, July the 4th, actually. Right, we've achieved our objective. It's, yes, it's the 4th of, well nearly, because we've never got any literature, but it's the 4th of July, we're in Newmarket, oh, and we've managed to get some beacons, but not souvenir ones yet. Um, and basically we're going to Exxon in a moment, it's raining, and um, that's what we're doing at present. few technical problems with the computer lately. It's going very slow and sometimes it stops. Um, right, over and out, back to the cassette. Right, we're in the middle of a thunderstorm. I'm not... And um, we went to Rexham. It's pouring with rain. It's thunder and lightning. It's quite scary. Anyway, we're at Burwa. I've just turned down... A road called Isaacson Road, which is interesting. So there were probably Isaacsons and people could be people burned up here. We're just going to drive around at the moment. This big storm with electric open over above. Over and out. Hello, it's us again. Well, we're now parked. We've moved on from parking outside Burwell Church because of the storm. We've decided it's a really big graveyard that we need to tackle earlier in the day. So what we're doing now, we're going to just going, we're back at Exxon, we're parked outside Exxon, it's, oh, we're just hovering because there's a great big cloud above us, Clouds it's looking a bit menacing, actually, a big dark one, and debating whether to get out of the car and risk being struck by lightning or not, um, can't really tell. Anyway, that's what we're going to be doing in a minute. It's, um, it's a shame this rain's appeared, but... Uh, <sighs> right, we're at Stretchworth now. The storm seems to have eased, and we decided to drive around until we could find a safe to come out. Of course, since that visit in 2005, I've been back several times, and in 2008, I um, was up there on a visit, and I managed to find several Clayton and Clayton graves. I'd done some research into this aspect of our tree, and um, that will be on a later tape recording, of course. Um, but just to remind you that there is more to come at a later date. Back to the cassette. Well, we, we found a Burgess, a Jane Burgess, who died in 1904, age 84, and Joseph Burgess, who died 19, looks about, about the same time, age 74. We have got a Burgess somewhere in the family. Who's back of it? Oh, yes, yeah, Annie Burgess there. Where? Um, on top. Oh, yeah, that's right. In love and memory of Catherine, the beloved wife of Walter Elson, who died December the 5th, 1903, age 51. It's in Elston. We've got a beloved wife of Tom Mason, she's called Alice, daughter of G. Castle, who died 1905, age 49. But it's a Mason, though, isn't it? Yeah. Then next to that, we've got George Castle, who left this life April the 5th, 1904, age 85. Then Elizabeth, the beloved wife of John Castle, fell asleep, 
February 15th, 1901, age 57. And, yeah, that's right. That's our first Mason's Hour set. Lots of Simkins in here. And Hammonds. Oh, William Frost. 1865, age 63, and William Frost, 1876, age 76. John Bell. And Jobsons. I'm just taking the odd name down because I don't want to do all the details, but we might find a link somewhere another time. One was surrounded by metal bars of Herbert Fitzroy Eaton, born December the 28th, 1842, died April the 8th, 1875. Hmm. Yeah, it's a very old church again. They're all old. of the church you've got this great big tomb with a great big cover on it there's a name for it I can't remember what you call it now and the cross on top what's that say down there F E oh it looks so derelict some of these churches that one at Burwell looked more like a cathedral though we haven't been in it of course yet because of the storm we're trying to make up for it. I'm doing this church today. Not in it, we really have got one order anyway. Here lieth interred the body of Walter Norton, formerly of this parish school master. Died November 1782 in his 45th year. And the body of Mary, his wife, she died month of July, I think it's 1782, in her 40th year. Also the bodies of their three children who died in their infancy, William, one of the sons of Father Walter and Mary, died in London and his body is buried there. There's also there's a clay in us buried here. She thinks there might be a link somewhere. An oak murder Claydon. We've got some big stones in this place. Catherine was the wife of a James Claydon who died 1869. Of course, I've got a, a very well-developed tree now of the Claydons, which are a, a lot of, all, most of my stuff, including all my tape recordings, are on Ancestry.com now. So everything is safe. And, um, of course, I explored the Claydon tree, and I've got an awful lot of information about that. I didn't even know about in 2005. Herbert Fitzroy Eaton died July the 18th, 1873, age 59, and his wife Hannah age 60 and there was Elizabeth Priscilla child of Charles and Eleanor Jennings born June 17th 1868 died October the 10th 1869 there's Arthur William third son of Joseph and Anna Maria Brown born October the 14th 1857 died March the 1st 1860 and their fourth son, Herbert Alfred, who died when he was about five. And Joseph Collins, their eldest son, born January 24th, 1848, died August 15th, 1874. Also Joseph Brown, who died August 9th, 1891, in his 74th year. That's a red sandstone of John Setchell, an upright stone on the path leading up to the church who died June 16th, 1891, age 69, and his wife, Elizabeth Setchell, S-E-T-S-H-E-L-L, 
who died the 2nd of May, 1899, aged 70. And next to them is some, a Samuel Satchel, who died 1868, aged 75, and his wife Alice, who died 1883, possibly the parents of John. Margaret, wife of Robert Clayton, um, who died March the 17th, 1797. So that is old. Then you've got Robert Clayton himself, who died 1827. <sighs> And then there's another Clayton, John, I think it's John, yes, John Clayton, he died when he was 70, and his wife died in 1819, so this is quite an old one, I think he died January 18, 17, or it's, I think it's 1817. These are quite old, these three, but someone's been yeah. and just put in. This is a nice, quiet graveyard. It's, cut, it's not like the one we were in in Newmarket today, surrounded by houses and roads. This is out in the middle of nowhere, tucked away with lovely, great big pine trees all around and a couple of oak trees next to a stud farm. Um, there is a private little garden with one stone in it. I don't know where it's locked the gate to that, so that's somebody important in there. But we aren't allowed to go in there for some reason. It might be a part of somebody's garden. Looks like a tractor come in. Because we're out in the countryside. And they're right going down Harveston. There's another big one, great big one coming. We're crossing over now to a more, this is a new graveyard, the other side of the road at Stretchworth. There are some big old ones though, so we will quickly go around and have a look. And some old ones. There's a few Hollands here, could be, I've got my Auntie Alice married a Holland man, quite a few Jacobs as well. There's a Peggy Miller, this is a, um, very recent this is, this is a gemstone of Peggy Miller, a dear wife and mother, who died 14th of January 2000, age 72. I'm sort of doing extracts out of the graveyard now, because of the got so much to do. It's, um, there's a hall and a marshal. Lots and lots of new ones. We're just looking at the old ones but glancing at the new ones because they could be people from recent times that are related to us. So, you know, we've got to sort of Try and scan more than anything now. It's scanning. In history, we've got a Thomas Oak who married a Hannah Ship, and buried here we've got a Frederick Ship who died 7th of October 1961, age 71. Recent, of course, but could still be related. Oh, and Zara and her Woolards. Yeah. We found a Woolard, Henrietta Woolard, died August 1948, age 69. Could still be a relation. There's a very small community around here, very small for villages. A lot of people like to marry their cousins, someone told me. Who? Bye. Well, then there's a few byes, B Y E's, in this place. I'm sure there's a link somewhere. And there's a marsh. 
and a swan. And a marshal. And a claydon. There's lots and lots of graves. Oh look, White Lodge Hospital. That sounds familiar. Private Thomas Henry Highstead died in White Hot Lodge Hospital, June 15th, 1942, aged 25. Jolly family, the Bateman family. Lots of Batemans, lots of Jollies. Yeah, I've got that one. Sydney George Brown, 26th of March. I can't read the date, he was 83 anyway. Ethel Green. War Batemans. There's a lieutenant, a wife of Lieutenant Colonel Geoffrey Babington. Lady Anne Babington and their eldest daughter of the 4th Earl of Ellesmere died at Docking, Norfolk, July the 15th, 1964, age 56. A couple of recent ones. I'm looking across at lots of graves. You can see all the new ones. You can see their names from a long way off. The new ones. As soon as one sticks out, we've got a Robert Louis Marsh. Died 1923, age 38. And his wife, Louis, Lucy Edith. She lived in 1979, aged 95. We're going to creep up on a couple old ones. Got some fullers. Lancasters. And some another heart. Um, Holland. Another Holland. Lots of black slugs are sorted out where all the water is, is poured with rain today. There's a Stinton in there, Stinton. Daniel somebody. Yeah, I think if I see an oak on Mason, it will stick out so much I will not miss it. And of course Brooks, Isaacson's. The ones we're hoping to see that are that far away. Is this another one? It's one of Zara's Woolards. A Rebella. I think it is, or Rebecca. Rebecca Woolard, who died September the 12th, 1915. Can't see the age. Could be 75, could be 16, I'm not sure. Oh, so somebody else, Woolard, who died in the... 1917, so there's a lot of woolards around this county. Lots of uh, graves, but not all got stones now. Don't know what they've done with them all. There's a bit of a scrapyard at the back here. And there's a river, actually. Oh, I'm actually treading on a stone. There's a river. Runs through somebody's garden. A bridge? Oh, we've had a brig. Briggs. Phyllis Briggs. We've met her before. January the 18th, 1952, age 71. Because I had trouble with tape recordings, I've got a feeling that this little bit of tape is in Dullingham again. Because I did have that problem. Because this was supposed to have been the Dullingham tape, which I taped over. 
So as you might find we've got a little bit of Dullingham creeping in here and there. But I might be wrong. This might still be Stretchworth. I'll know in a minute. And Frank James Briggs at rest, April the 10th, 1918. Can't might read his name, but he that was Frank James. Have a look these bricks up eventually. At the back of the graveyard we've got Edward Granger, who died April the third, nineteen fifty-four, age eighty-five. Um and Eliza Granger, his wife who died July the thirty-first, nineteen fifty, age eighty-five. And then you've got a John Albert Bushnell, died March the 30th, 1964, age 67, and his wife, Jessie Adelaide, who died June the 22nd, 1968, age 65. Just of a bit of, you know, just adding a few people who aren't related to us, just because it might, they, their names might crop up again when we're doing further research. Right, there's an Emma, Ellen... Eliza Wells, that's not a very common name round here. She was 91 when she died in 1967. And Taylor family. I think we've done all we can in this graveyard because these are all new. It's, it's very pitted. Each graveyard we go in, we seem to find somebody. with a name that we're looking for. Might not necessarily be direct, we're not sure yet. When, when we left Burwell earlier, we went down a long road, built by the Romans, I reckon it was long, it was called Heath Road. It was almost like um, a bypass off the main road, and um, as we were going down from Burwell back into Exen, we passed this really big farm, and on the wall it said Mason and Sons. So we need to remember that Heath Road, because that could actually be ancestors of ours from the past. Right, we're back at Exon now, and we're at the um, St. Martin's, I think it is, anyway. We're going to go up the side and work our way through them. Yesterday we, went on, we only kept to the path. I'm just going to get the map out to locate where we are. Wait a minute. The map. There's the church and the tower. Now, we're looking at it this way, Zara. Right. Okay, now, I think that's the tower. That could be the long that's bit. That's the church lane. So, oh, we're, so we're that, that way. way. Where is the church hall, then? There? Well, it could be. Yeah. This is church lane. We're so, we're there. going up the path. Oh, that's the long bit of the church. That must be the tower, then. Yeah. And then there's, I think there's a brooks up there. We found the other two, like these two here. We found oh, right, old woman. So it well, we're in Exxon Church. It's Thomas Wilson, who died November the 22nd, 1863, age 49. And his wife, Elizabeth Wilson, who died February 25th, 1900, aged, could be 20-something, I think. And David Wilson, who died February the 23rd. They all seem to die in February, don't these people? 1854, age five. Elizabeth, wife of William Coe. Um, who left in 18, died 1864. Can't see the month. And also William himself who died July the 24th, 1880, aged 75. Then you've got William Taylor, lots of Taylors, who died 1851, aged uh, age 30. This is a Brown, yeah? Yes. George Brown and Sophia Brown, or Brooks. Or is it Brooks or Brown? What's that say? It's like a K on the end. Was there Sophia Brooks? It does look like a two O's. B R O O K, I think. It's B R something. Browning, it might be. 
Oh yeah, well, yeah, that, that could be a W actually. Oh, I thought it was Brooks, we're getting excited again. James Gourley. Ellen Gourley. Died the 22nd of May 1871. And James Gourley, her husband, died March 1902, age 85. Then we've got Anne, the daughter of Francois and Sophia Bowman, who died January 1844, age 27. Yeah, it looks like a sort of a, a yellow sandstone colour, the church. It's got a clock on it. There's a Ralph Wesley, who died 1866, age 47. Henry Wesley. And Henry Wesley, who died something 56, probably 1856 or 9, or it could be an O even, one of those anyway. And I can't read that one. Could be a Ralph, somebody or other. Got a Warren. I told you there was Warrens in the family that I've done on the Mason side. Right. John Warren, yes, there was a Warren. Don't ask me. I think Margaret Warren married a Mason. And that's just, uh, right, now Susan Warren died July the 9th, 1881, age 79. Also John Warren, who died the 15th of May, 1899, age 82. That sounds pretty like John Warren could have been Margaret Warren's brother because the Warrens married into the Masons. So I've got to remember Warrens. Oh, we've got a Harriet Bunn who died June the 23rd, 1877, age 84, and George Bunn so I should find out what these people did for an occupation. Who died September the 15th, 1875, age 75. And his son Enoch, who died 1878, age 21. And then there was a Harry Bunn, who died 1865, age 65. Also Mary, his wife, who died... Oh, I don't know if it is his wife. Yeah, it could be. October the 26th, 1868, age 65. That's a big one. Then we've got Mary Ann, wife of Charles Reed, who died uh, 1863, age 48, and Charles himself died December the 22nd, age 18, um, in 1885, age 72. These all, all these people died around about the same time as Mason. Mason Brooks died in 1889, so they would have, but though he was living at Brinkley, don't forget, he was born in Exon. Then you got William Reed, can't quite see that. And then you've got another Bun, you've got Enoch Bun and his wife Caroline, and they died in the 18s. Somebody's dug this one out, actually who died April the 20th, 1811. So this is the older Buns here, age 78. And Caroline, his wife, age, uh, died February the 13th, 1838, age 72. So these are the older Buns. Somebody's dug this out. Oh, there's another Bun in the background. There's Lydia, wife of John Charles Bunn. This is a big family who died 1836, age 62. And John Charles Bunn himself, who died August the 13th, 1876, in his 87th year. So I have to look up Bunns. They don't come to mind. There's probably one of my lot under that tree. There's one here surrounded. It's protected. It's got um, plastic stuff around it and... So we don't know who that is. Weather's looking 
Absolutely lovely. Then we got John Toom, or Toomey. Toomey, who died November the 18th, 1853, age 50. Now we're coming up to a big monument. In, um, we're coming up to a big monument um, in front of the Bun people of John Hammond. In the memory of John, son of John and Rebecca Hammond, who died August the 2nd, 1798, age 28. Also John, who died December the 3rd, 1819, age 86, and Rebecca, his wife, who died 18th of July, 1823, age 86. Also Elizabeth, their daughter, who died December 1854, age 79. So we don't know, these Hammonds could be related to Brookses and Masons and people yet. We don't know, you see. Oh, that's the bun lot. And past the buns. We should be coming up to a brook in a minute, which is up in the corner according to the map. Should be in a minute. There's a William Webb. very stormy to me, there's a cloud right above us that looks very, very, very dangerous. Oh, we've got Charles Burgess, beloved son of James Avis Webb of Exon, who died March the 9th, 1881, aged 22. This is looking so dodgy, isn't it? Weather, that cloud there is scaring me. Have we done these? Yeah, I've done that one. Somewhere over here we should have... Somewhere around about here there should be um, a brook. According to the map. Not, Not right in... No, these are the visible. Oh, I don't like that cloud. It looks like I'm getting scared. What's that? Elizabeth of James Avis Webb. 1863. Eliza, daughter of... Somebody... Robert somebody, could be Robert James, age 49 years, we've got um, at the behind here we've got James Stubbs who died December the 26th, 1866, age 60, Richard Cotton, yeah, Richard Cotton, who died February 15th, 1868, age 40. It might, it might have been a Burgess that I've linked, I've marked off there. Oh, right. Might not have been a Brooks. Because I've, I've, I'd have to consult to yeah. see where I've ticked. Might have been a Burgess, you know, because we've got them in the family. Road, and I think that road. Yeah, there's something with two O's. Not even three, it can't be three O's, can it? Good win, it could be. Yeah, do we know any good wins?
Right, bit of side two coming up. Let's start on the other side, we're in at Clean Graveyard, we've got Ambrose Frost, died March the 4th, 1869, age 64, so Sarah, wife of him, died May the 24th, 1875, age 72. Then we've got two Bryants, who died in 1837 and 1841, eh? Third one. Yeah, there's a few Bryants. In fact, there's a big Bryant group here. So I'm not going to um, say about them all. And Avis is another one. I'll give you one. Thomas Avis, who died 21st of February, 1841, age 29. And another one who another Thomas Avis who, who died when he was age 44 and we got a heifer family lots of heifers around here and a John Green he died August 25th 1863 age 43 um, also our dear mother Sarah Gifford Green, his wife, who died May the 13th, 1900, age 79, and Alfred Green, who died suddenly February the 13th, 1901, age 55, a brother. Well, we're, I think we, this main road, we actually come past it, don't we, when we go back in, yeah, I think we do, because we go around that bend up there, there's a I swear I got lost because I didn't know which direction we were going in. We have uh, to go left or right. I'm just coming back to George Brooks. It said sacred in the memory of George Brooks, who died August the 31st, 1822, aged 70 years, also of Margaret, his wife. Um aged 88 there, there would have been a little poem at the bottom but we can't read any of that and he's related to us because um, he's related to Richard and Martha you know so that's him the old grave at the back of the church of someone who died in 1710 I don't know who it is. Brandy's scared, so I'm scared. It's looking like it's going to thunder again in a minute. I just want to go over here. It's that sort of evening. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't have another storm later. I'm going over the corner now, because we never did these last night, because we were hungry. Over in the corner we've got John Hobbs, who died 18, something or other, aged 50 years, and Rebecca, Rebecca is quite a common name, she was 76 when she died. Then over in the corner we've got, oh, David, M-O-W-L. Mowl. Funny name. Age 28, who died in 1873, and his wife Hannah, who died 1871, so she died before him, age 29. And there's a Peachy, who died. These are at the back. Then next to it, a couple going up a few, you've got Anna, Emma. Daughter of John and Eliza Mowell, yes, it's M O W L, the funny name, who died January the 2nd, 1879, age 21. Also, Eliza, the beloved wife of John, she died sometime as well. And we're going on again, we've got these, um, we've got Philip son of John and Elizabeth Bullen, who died February the 15th, 1875, age 27, and Sarah Ann, their daughter, who died 
1858. And then another Bullen, Eliza Bullen, who died January the 31st, 1879. Could be six years. No, it couldn't be six. It was John. No, John died, who was the husband of Eliza. Died January the 31st, 1879. Age 60 something, I think. And Eliza, who died 19th. September 1897, age 76. Then two of the men of something or other. It's like a thing on the floor. It's all right, babe. Oh, my child. Getting scared of the bang bangs. We've got a Louis Cooper here. Oh, a Louis Cooper. We've got Louis the Cooper, you know, Stipe, yeah. who died um, August the 28th, 1870, age 56. Wouldn't that be funny if that was him, Louis the Cooper? Because that would explain why Arthur, no, why the other Louis came over this way. James Tibbet. I think that is. Not very clear, that one. She can feel the storm coming, can't you, Bran? Memory, a memory of Eliza, wife of Thomas Nun, Nunny, somebody or other. Not very clear, that one. And then there's Mary, so they're not very clear, any of these. Mary, somebody. Then there's Elizabeth, wife of Edward Hancock, who died 1852. Over in the corner, we've got William, I don't know if it's Tyson or Lyson, died 1813, age 67, and his wife Sarah Petchley. Peachy or Peachy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, another. Oh, it's Fison. Richard Fison. Son of William and Sarah. He died um, at some point or other. And then we've got more Fisons. This is a Fison area around here. Very Fison. Well, I think we've just... We've got some Chapmans. We've got Henry Alfred Chapman who departed this life. Um... August 31st, 1877, age 62, and Francis, his wife, who died September 25th, 1883, age 37, I think, or it could be 57, and Sarah Ann Chapman, who died 1874, age 18, and Thomas Chapman died August 6th, 1882, age 30. Oh yeah, then we've got our James. It looks, do you know what, this is weird, because it looks like this one's been cleaned up again overnight. Because so I did give the names, you know the people I, I got this from, I did tell them who I was looking for. So they've been out of... that one looks the same to me. No, but it still, it has been cleaned up, I think. You can see the marks. Oh, and then we got, yeah, we got James Isaacson. I'm quite pleased with some of this because, um, you know, the, I, I've got links to these. So I really need to get some flowers and bring them. I don't know where I'm putting my seeds yet. I might put it on. I don't know where to put the seeds yet. I haven't decided. Oh, it's the one without a surname. Oh, yeah, it was weird, wasn't it? There's some lovely roses here. I feel like going to put a rose on those two graves. be open. It was open last night because they were having a service. They shut it after six o'clock, I spat. Oh, excuse me. It is looking very dark now. Oh, yeah. 
We found a stone here. It says George Brooks. Could be Porter. I don't know. It's yeah. Who departed this life June the 17th, 1818. Aged either 53 or 33. But there's a but there's a porter. A porter. That might be his occupation. I don't know if it's porter. What's that there? So that's definitely an R on the end, yeah. and that's an E, I think. Yeah. That could be. It must be a T then, or something. It's a bit unclear. There's something here. But we, we never found that yesterday. Oh, so there's another Brooks here. We've got Francis Wesley, who died April the 6th, 1810. And Mary, his wife, February. I can't quite read. Oh, look at little tails between their legs. What about this one here? All right, sorry, we're trying to get this bit done because you wanted to finish this I know, graveyard. Oh, right, she's fine. She's had enough of it all. Right, I wonder who's down on this one then. Yeah, we pity we can't turn it over, innit? Because it's on the wrong side. On the back here, on this footstone, it's got GBP. So he was, might have been a Brooks, but but a Porter. Now what I'm saying is because he's been given the name Brooks by his mother, who was a Brooks herself. But it, yes, I've got that name. I've got that Porter name. I can remember now. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I know what you mean. So her, her yeah, one of them married a. Yeah, now what year did he die again? 1818. Yeah, so it was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. 1818 was when I ate on the Yeah. So his mother would have been related to us probably. He's probably related to us. I, I have got that information somewhere. Definitely got that information. Have a look at some of the other footstones. So quite good clues now I've worked out where you worked out what they were. They've got their initials on the back of them. And all those we saw in the other graveyard, we didn't know what they were. Originally, until you worked it out. Francis. This rings a bell, the Wesley lot. The Wesley lot, and we're here on these Brooks on it. I've got the feeling that there is a Brooks Wesley or a Wesley. There is, there is a link with this Wesley name as well. I want to know where the other graveyard is. And we've got a, a, a two, one stone that's fallen down there. That yeah. could possibly be one of ours. What other tomb? No, 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 no. The other graveyard that we saw next to another St. Well, I don't know if it was. It could have been this St. Martin's we went yeah, but past. I but I thought it was on the main road. Yeah, it, did, it was on the main road, wasn't it? This is like a little lane, isn't it? What no, we're going to... Yeah. Well, I don't know. We went the wrong way, and I reckon what happened? We, when we came back, we saw that, and we thought, like you said, we'd just gone past the one we know, St. Martin's. Yeah, well, what about the other graveyard I saw near it then? On the other side of the road. There was a graveyard further along with those graves in. Oh right. Well, we'll have to well, repeat the journey. Was, yeah. Have we done these in the front? Yeah, it's a big marble slab in loving remembrance of can't read the name though hold on a minute oh, M.A. Vicar of Exim born March the 13th 1803 he probably married my Mason probably died December the 23rd 1883 I can't read his name which is strange 
<coughs> Mason and Eleanor actually got married at um, Borough Green. Then they went to live in Brinkley where they, they are buried somewhere. and a small church. So we've come up this little gravel lane and there's a gate. So we're just going to have a quick look round this one. Because um, we don't know who, what it is. Alright. And so I shuts the door, I can knock. Yeah, you're right. Because I wouldn't have sit, because I was keeping my eye on the road, I wouldn't have spotted it, you see. Right, I'm going to call it an end there, because I've actually recorded quite a lot of Xing on another tape. But it never hurts to record more than once. Um, so that was our visit to Exxon in 2005. We did have a bit of rain at the beginning of our holiday there. I mean, it's 2010 now that I'm talking. Um, I don't know whether I've actually been back to um, St. Martin's since that uh, fi uh, first visit. I have been back to Stretchworth, Burwell, Borough Green, of course, Dullingham. I've done all those um, back in 2008, and I'm hoping to go back there again this year because I've made more discoveries, you see. So anyway, over and out for now.